Right. I welcome members to the 21st meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. <coughs> and as always, ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed we take item eight in private. This will allow the committee to discuss its approach to the Delegated Powers provisions in the Inquiries into Deaths Scotland Bill at stage one, with a view to agreeing the contents of a report to the Justice Committee. Does the committee agree to take item eight in private, please? Thank you. Item two is instrument subject to a affirmative procedure, and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Public Record Scotland Act 2011 authorities amendments, Order 2015 draft, nor on the advice and assistance, assistance by way of, way of representation, Scotland Amendment Number Three, Regulations 2015 draft. Does the committee have any comments, or is the committee content with those instruments, please? Yeah, thank you. Gender item three, instruments subject to negative procedure, the Common Agricultural Policy Direct Payments, etc. Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSA 2015 215. This instrument was laid before Parliament on the 28th of May 2015, and Regulations 1 to 3 came into force on the 1st of June, meaning that the requirement to leave a minimum of 28 days between laying and coming into force has not been complied with. Does the Committee therefore agree to draw this instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground? J as there has been a failure to observe the requirements of Section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010. John. Um, I would just like to say, and perhaps this is not necessarily the right point to say it, but I, I, I accept the government's explanation um, as to why it's taking so long, and I would have to declare an interest in this, which is why um, I accept the government's explanation, because I know the hoops they had to go through to make this happen. So. Um, Those comments. <coughs> Indeed. Um, as a matter of process, however, the instrument was made on the 26th of May and laid on the 28th of May, creating a two-day gap between the making of the instrument and the laying of it. The Scottish Government has accepted that in relation to the 28-day rule, which was breached, of course, it would have been an advantage if arrangements had been made to put in place to lay the instrument forthwith. As after it was made on the 28th rather than two days later. Does the committee agree to write to the government indicating that where a 28-day rule is breached, it will be expected that wherever possible an instrument is laid before Parliament expeditiously after it's been made? Yes. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Education Student Support Miscellaneous Amendments Scotland Regulations 2015 SSI 2015 212. The All Scotland Sheriff Court, Sheriff Personal Injury Court Order 2015, SSI 2015 213. The Scheduled Monument Consent Procedure Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 229. Town and Country Planning Appeals Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 233. Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Scotland Amendment Order 2015, SSI 2015 235. Town and Country Planning, Determination of Appeals by Appointed Persons, Prescribed Classes, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 236. The Town and Country Planning, Historic Environment, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 237. The Historic Environment Scotland First Planning Period Order 2015 SSI 2015 238. The Historic Environment Scotland Act 2014 Saving Transitional and Consequential Provisions Order 2015 SSI 2015 239. The Planning Listed Buildings and Conservation Areas Urgent Works to Crown Land Scotland Regulations 2015 SSI 2015 240 and the Listed Buildings Notification and Publication Scotland Regulations 2015 SSI 2015 241. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Thank you. Agenda item four, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure, the Legal Writings, Counterparts and Delivery Scotland Act 2015, Commencement Order 2015, SSI 2015 242. Given the committee's consideration of the Legal Writings, Counterparts and Delivery Scotland Bill, members will be pleased to note that this instrument commences the remaining parts of the Legal Writings, Counterparts and Delivery Scotland Act 2015, which are currently not in force, on the 1st of July 2015. No points have been raised on this order, or on the remaining instrument, which is the Vulnerable Witnesses Scotland Act 2004, Commencement Number 8, Order 2015, SSI 2015, 244. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Stuart. The committee is extremely pleased to see the delivery of uh, the not insubstantial work we did on the legal writings, and of course content to see it pass uh, into effect. 
Uh, agenda item number five is the. Sorry, John, did I miss? I was just going to sure. say, uh, support what Stuart Stevenson has said, and this is the first piece of legislation passed by this committee. And I think it's very much to be welcomed that we managed, hopefully, to achieve it successfully. Indeed. Thank you. With that, let us turn to agenda item five, which is the Community Empowerment Scotland Bill. And this item of business is consideration of the early pack delegated powers provisions in this bill as modified by stage three amendments. Stage three consideration of the bill is due to take place tomorrow. The committee should therefore agree any conclusions today. There are proposed stage three amendments in five areas that may be of particular interest to the committee. The first group of amendments of relevance to the committee concern part one of the bill and the national outcomes. In its stage one report, the committee was concerned that there was to be no role for Parliament in scrutinising these outcomes. The bill was amended at stage two to the effect that national outcomes were to be prescribed in regulations and subject to parliamentary scrutiny through a super affirmative procedure. Provision was also made at stage two for the Scottish Parliament to be consulted in accordance with Rule 17.5 of Standing Orders of the Parliament on national draft, sorry, on draft national outcomes for a 40-day period. Amendments 27 and 34 propose to remove the requirement for the national outcomes to be set out in regulations. The Scottish Government uh, is not, however, proposing to remove the requirement for consultation with the Parliament in advance of the outcomes being determined. This would allow the lead committee and the Parliament as a whole to consider the report on the draft national outcomes. Do members have any comments on draft national outcomes? Stuart. Um, I think it's uh, very much welcome to be welcomed that the government has responded to this committee's concerns uh, in, in relation to the bill which was originally laid. I think the uh, proposals that are now before the Parliament for passing or rejecting tomorrow um, are ones that I think we are likely to uh, feel should be passed uh, and uh, I would certainly personally wish uh, the amendments that are being made tomorrow bon voyage and welcome the fact they reflect our previous consideration. Thank you. Right. John. Welcome um, this um, as well, uh, the National Outcome Amendments, um, in as much as uh, this is what was sought. And Parliament now has the ability to have an input, and that's therefore to be welcomed. Indeed, thank you. Amendments 42 and 43 replace Section 24A of the Bill, which was inserted at Stage 2, and provide a power to make provision in regulations for reviews and appeals in relation to decision notices and participation requests under Part 3. The power would, among other things, allow Scottish Minister to, to determine to whom appeals may be made, as well as the time limits which would apply in relation to such appeals. And that power is subject to the negative procedure. Do members have any comments on these appeals procedures? No? Thank you. Amendment 4 provides for a regulation-making power to specify smaller areas or localities which community planning areas may be divided into for the purposes of outcome comparison. And that power is subject to the negative procedure. Do you members have any comments on that one, Stuart? Um, I, th I think uh, I very much welcome the fact that uh, this flexibility is built in. Uh, many of the councils that cover large territorial areas, Highland is an obvious one, and uh, Aberdeenshire would be another, uh, in their internal operations uh, have an area-based management, which will series of area committees, um, which uh, reflect the fact that localities are often rather smaller than the council area. So having this flexibility, I think, is a, is a good uh, process um, that uh, I think uh, we should welcome in the drafting of the amendment that uh, is brought forward at Amendment 4 uh, look as if it uh, meets uh, the appropriate needs. Right, moving on then. Amendments 174 to 176 empower the Scottish Ministers to make regulations facilitating supporter involvement in the decisions of football clubs and supported ownership of football clubs while subsequent amendments remove the current Part 5B regarding supporters' trusts' right to buy, uh, to right to buy Scottish professional football league clubs. The new power is subject to the affirmative procedure and various parties must be consulted before regulations are made. Do members have any comments, John? 
Uh, thanks, convener. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is a step uh, probably in the right direction um, because I think there was a danger here that there was a rush into legislation. It, I mean, it does seem to me that the, there's quite wide powers now given to ministers. Um, we're talking now about all football clubs and not just the 42 uh, SPFL clubs. Um, but I do accept that there is a lot of consultation to be gone through before anything actually happened. Um, so I think uh, that seems positive, and the fact it's the affirmative procedure uh, is positive as well. Okay, thank you. Right. Members may wish to note that following last week's meeting, I have lodged amendments on behalf of the committee to deal with the specific concern the committee had in relation to the construction of a number of the delegated powers in Part 5B of the Bill as inserted at Stage 2. The removal of Part 5B would address many of the committee's concerns expressed previously on the delegated powers in this part, including its concerns about the construction of those powers. Finally, Amendment 103 removes the regulation making power in Section 69A of the Bill regarding the size of allotments. Last week, the committee called on the Scottish Government to clarify how this power was to interact with the requirements as to allotment size set out in Section 68 of the Bill. Do members have any comments? John. Uh, yes, thanks, Convener. Um, I mean, I think this is it's certainly positive that there's more clarity because that was, I think, the main thing that we were concerned about. It's a reasonably controversial area because people were nervous that they would, local authorities would forcibly reduce the size of allotments. So I think the fact we've got more clarity in this uh, and it appears that um, it would be only if people ask for a smaller allotment uh, that that is a positive direction as well. Thank you. Um I, I welcome the uh, fact that the committee did bring forward uh, five amendments uh, in the name of the committee. Slightly unusual procedure for a committee to be taking, um, but uh, I'm equally pleased to see that the government has responded and addressed the points that would otherwise have been uh, covered by amendments, and in particular, uh, that the detail as to how they would uh, bring forward the matters that would be in secondary legislation ad addressing the issues that we were looking at it is spelt out uh, at substantial length and I think uh, might usefully be a model for how uh, uh, such things are dealt with in future. Thank you. Uh, do members have any other comments on the Community Empowerment Bill? Which will obviously exercise us at length tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. That then moves us on to Agenda Item 6, which is the Air Weapons and Licensing Scotland Bill. <coughs> this item of business is consideration of the delegated powers provisions in the bill as amended at Stage 2. The committee's conclusions will form the basis for a report from the committee in advance of the Stage 3 debate, which is scheduled for Thursday the 25th of June. The committee should again therefore agree its conclusions today. Members will have noted the Scottish Government has provided a supplementary delegated powers memorandum and will have seen the briefing paper. For there is one delegated power in particular which the committee may wish to comment on. Section 66C inserts a new section 37A into the Civic Government Scotland Act 1982. The new section 37A provides a new regulation making power <coughs> which enables the ministers to make provisions specifying circumstances in which the entire metal dealing licensing and regulation regime in sections 28 to 37 of the 1982 Act, including the amendments of the new provisions and the new provisions, are not to apply. This extends also to the power to disapply the new and amended provisions in the Bill on metal dealer licensing. The power is therefore widely drawn. Given the scope of the power, does the committee therefore agree to call on the Scottish Government to consider amending the bill at stage 3 so that the power in section 66C, inserting new section 37A of the 1982 Act, is subject to the affirmative procedure rather than the negative procedure? Agreed. Does the committee agree to report that it is content with the other provisions in the bill which have been amended at stage 2 to insert or substantially alter provisions conferring powers to make subordinate legislation and other delegated powers? Agreed. John. Um, I would just also like to put on the record um, how welcome uh, the fact is that the amendment to the commencement powers in section 78 of the bill and that um, in terms of licences and personal licences um, that will be implemented the day after uh, Royal Assent is given. Uh, I had quite a number of my constituents affected by this and I therefore welcome um, this amendment to the previous legislation which was much needed. Yeah. 
can I actually grey as well because this will make a big difference to actually people that at the moment can't actually reapply for that licence holder certificate. Indeed. Thank you. <coughs> Turning now to agenda item 7, the Mental Health Scotland Bill. The purpose of this item is to consider the delegated powers provisions in the bill as amended at stage 2. The stage 3 debate for this bill will take place on Wednesday the 24th of June. Committee should therefore agree its conclusions today so they can be captured in a report prior to the debate. Members will again have noted the Scottish Government has provided a supplementary delegated powers memorandum and will have seen the briefing paper. It's proposed that members may wish to find all the new or amended delegated powers acceptable. Does the Committee agree to report that it is content with the provisions in the Bill which have been amended at stage two to insert or substantially alter provisions converting powers to make subordinate legislation and other delegated powers? We do. Thank you. That completes item seven, and I then move the uh, committee into private. Thank you very much. Next item. <laughs>